Hi, I'm Eric with Kansas City Bot Combat. And here I'm kind of giving an overview of my uh, design choices with Hello Trouble, which has been around for probably about four or five years now. And this is the, the current iteration. It is an undercutter four wheel drive. This was originally came out, uh, looked more like this with uh, the undercutter on the bottom. And it came out at the same time as Wackaderm. So very similar. Both of these are printed out of PLA plus. Uh, the big difference with Hello Trouble originally is it had a metal band around the outside for armor. So it kind of would look more like that. So four wheel drive. Um, this had the same, a lot of the same problems that Wackaderm originally had, where the wheels is like 500 RPM, so it went really slow. And I had a problem where I had used kind of like wood screws to hold the, the band on into the PLA and that ripped, those ripped out of the PLA pretty easily. So that was a problem with some of the fights where the, the band would come out and actually get stuck underneath the robot. So another funny thing is my original printer, the max capacity for a size was like 5.8 by 5.8 inches. So this is 5.8 inches and even with Almost all my robots still, I've kind of kept with that 5.8 inch body. So even my new ones, you can see the main body of it is still 5.8 inches because that just stuck with me for some reason. So again, uh, using N20 motors for all these. And originally I, I was used this size brushless motor and did a kind of a direct drive for the weapon, which was looked like that. So I actually had an aluminum hub that would push over top of the motor and attach to it. And then you had the mount here on top. Um, that worked pretty well. One of the problems I had was getting the blade to stay uh, level. My, one of my goals was to get that undercutter as low as possible. So with that design, um, basically the, the heads of the bolts were scraping the floor a lot because it was so low. Um, but that did work pretty well. Uh, after that first event, I kind of got rid of PLA Plus as a body uh, material and went to carbon fiber PLA, which did that for Wackderm as well. And that's when I got more like this style. You can see that I'm still, my N20 motors are still bolting in there, still has the same way of holding it. Um, it just basically changed the material to hold up better. Uh, for a while, I tried to actually hit that hole right there. I had a camera that would fit in there. Uh, the problem was, because I thought it'd be really cool to get footage during the, the fights. The problem was the camera was so cheap that anytime you turned, it would just get blurry and you couldn't see anything, but it's a cool idea. Um, so you can see from all of these many, many bodies here with a lot of different iterations of prototyping to get a body that I liked in the right size and shape. And I decided to get, go away from uh, I didn't want to have these hard uh, wheel guards because I had a lot of problems of getting the wheels in and out or if, if the battery or if the motor went bad, actually getting the wheel off and the battery off, or it was just a pain to service. So one of the first things, that, first things I did was get rid of this. That allowed the body of the robot to actually be bigger and have a wider stance, which is how I ended up with this style and shape. The crazy thing is over the four or five different iterations of Hello Trouble, this basic shape hasn't really changed at all. One of the changes that I, that I did is here you can see I still have the bottom being printed and I added metal on the bottom so that if the weapon got out of kilter, it wouldn't cut through the bottom of my robot. So. Eventually I figured out why bother gluing on an extra metal piece? Why not just have the bottom be metal and make things easier? 
So that is where I went with this dial, where just the, the whole bottom is metal, and the inside frame is just this nylon section right here. So there's just a couple bolts that hold that nylon frame to the metal base, and that metal base adds the stability and the structural strength to hold everything consistent. Um, and then I added this one inch thick spring steel band around there as my armor. Um, that did work pretty well. Uh, you can see <laughs> from this that it gets, <laughs> it gets pretty mangled up because my son who drives Hello Trouble uh, really loves driving head first into whatever big weapon is there. So they get mangled pretty easily. But, as you can see there, uh, from some other horizontal spinners, it takes a blow pretty well. The problem was that if you get like this, you can shear off the heads of the bolts and it can come, become uh, unreliable. And it's really hard to get this to actually bow correctly so that it wouldn't interfere with the wheels. But this, even this nylon was a big improvement to um, the previous design. And this is still, this is a titanium blade. Worked pretty well. So, so I went from that and then I started, well, I want to do an indirect uh, drive for the weapon to add more reliability. Because I had a problem with this brushless motor, which is just held together by a C-clip or an E-clip where the can would pop off and the weapon would pop off and there really wasn't a good way to hold that together. So if I was facing, if I was upside down and I got hit by a vertical, a lot of times the brushless motor would just pop apart and leave the robot defenseless. So I wanted to improve that. So that's why I went with this brushless motor for all of my robots. You can see I like having the bolt in the back so that actually is what, what holds everything together so it can't just pop apart. And then also by separating the weapon from the, the dry brushless motor, I had a lot better time of reliability of the weapon. And this is a lot more powerful too. So part of what I did was this is the new frame where you can see I had a bushing here. I had a custom make an aluminum shaft to hold the weapon on. And that worked pretty well, but what you can see, this is a very small section to hold the bearing. And over time, it would tend to want to start bowing and then the blade underneath would start having an angle and it just ran into a lot of issues. And I would have problems with belt tension because the belt's always put pulling it. And um, one of my uh, most recent events he had a lot of hard time, like he could get the weapon spinning a little bit, but because of the lack of belt tension, it really wasn't able to do much. It couldn't, it couldn't get to full speed. So one of the big changes I did was to go to a double bushing configuration, which is what I have right now. But it's also worth knowing, even with my TPU armor, you can see how chewed that up, chewed up that is. Um, this is at the end of an event and still completely functional, but this worked a lot better and more reliable than spring steel. And this is lighter than this. So the benefit of having multiple robots at the same time is you can take lessons learned from one robot and apply it to the other. So this TPU armor is what I applied to Hello Trouble first, and now all of my robots have this TPU uh, as this armor. So now with the double bushing, I actually have, you can see I have a bearing on underneath and the top, and then the belt goes in between. So this is what the current robot looks like on the inside. So you have your, your drive right here. Um, this allows the, you have consistent belt tension it allows the, the belt really can't fall off because it's actually trapped between those two bushings. And the 
blade stays a lot, it stays level a lot easier so it doesn't actually hit your own body. Uh, and then this is another, this is an AR500 blade. I've kind of go, gone uh, away from titanium and more towards AR500 because it's a whole lot cheaper. So if I wanted to change the blade design, it's only like four or five bucks as opposed to like $17 for a blade. And I now have the equipment where I can actually make my own aluminum hubs to hold that on. So you can see there's just a, a pattern in there with the heads of the bolts is actually what's holding the weapon on. And that has worked very reliable. And now when you hit, get hit with a vertical spinner going up, it doesn't want to pull the blade off and doesn't uh, separate uh, the weapon motor at all. So I've been extremely happy with how well this drives. Um, this is basically, it's a four wheel, uh, N20 um, driven robot, uh, very reliable. You can see I have an air gap in here for the armor so that even when I get hit, it might take off this top part, but never actually gets to the heads of the bolts. So that's been pretty uh, successful as well. And then even on the back, there's actually nothing, nothing supporting this. It's just kind of squishy. So um, no matter where I get hit, it handles it pretty well. And these use the same style foam wheels that I use for Wackaderm. This is just like Harbor Freight uh, stress mat cut out on my laser uh, cutter so that it has like a custom uh, plus sign on the inside so they, they can't spin on the hub. And then they're coated with uh, a liquid latex for traction. That is basically a really cheap and uh, effective uh, way of having wheels. So come a long ways from this style body where one hit and just basically take chunks out and it would delaminate pretty easily to this style where it can take hit after hit and it doesn't really show any signs of damage. Um, it's also interesting that like the size difference, this is a lot bigger than this, but it does weigh the same amount. So as you get more attuned to monitoring weight, and where you actually use it, you can start getting smaller components on the inside and you're able to contribute more towards armor and a weapon. It has like, I think the effective range of this blade is a little over six inches. So it kind of covers the entire base. Depending on what robot you're going against, you can either go an undercutter or you can actually go upside down and discourage overhead attacks. Um, so that is Hello Trouble and kind of the, the design history that I have taken going from PLA Plus to carbon fiber PLA to nylon to nylon and TPU combined. Uh, seems to be working out really well and I'm looking forward to seeing how the next version of Hello Trouble uh, competes and coming up in May, we're having our next event. So 